Hello Pisces. So, um, if you're new to my readings, I do an intuitive section and then I pull cards on camera. So if you're not into the intuitive section and you don't feel like it's your story, you can go down to the description box um, down below and there should be a timestamp there that will let you skip what I, I think it says skip intro, but it'll skip the intuitive part and it'll go to the card reading. So um, the other thing is gender is very fluid in tarot. So I may say she, he or they or masculine or feminine, but just know that the genders can be reversed. It's more about the way the person person's acting and the feelings so you can identify who's who by kind of the roles they play in the reading so just know that that you can swap those around if you need to um so i may say you but i may actually be t um talking about somebody that you're connecting with so that's something else to be aware of okay so i'm picking up on a lot of nostalgia in your reading today a lot of this kind of feeling of almost like it's not regrets exactly but it's like reassessing things in the past and thinking like maybe having a bit of nostalgia for that things that that were but have gone away or uh, feelings of like you know thinking about things that didn't work out could you have acted any better but there's almost this feeling of like well do you know what I made the best possible choices at the time and I feel like you know when I stand in front of the pearly gates you know don't don't worry about what your religion is um you know if this isn't your religion take it as a metaphor uh, but it's like when I when I stand before the pearly gates when my soul is weighed against that white feather I can say that I did my best um and that I was a good person so this is kind of what's coming through now, when I set up your cards, um, what I was kind of feeling here, I was looking at the kind of progression of the Page of Cups to the Knight of Cups to the King of Cups. I do feel like this is all these cards here represent your energy. So the Page of Cups to me is almost that childlike quality of Pisces. Pisces is one of those signs that um, as they age, they almost get younger <laughs> they kind of get more more childlike more playful more imaginative uh, you know pisces often make great grandparents um so there's this aspect of imagination the ability to have a very wonderful um like a, a, a fantastic world inside your head um you know having rose tinted glasses seeing the best in situations the best in people and this kind of naivety that often comes along with piscean energy is very beautiful very fairy tale like or um fantasy sci-fi-esque is normally how it kind of shows itself so sorry excuse me it's not one of my readings if i'm not burping all the way through it um, so I feel like the moon energy here, you can see actually, let me just kind of show you, there's this page of cups with this, um, this fish in the cup. Now the fish in the cup for the page of cups represents, uh, the ability of Pisces to kind of believe in the impossible, believe that anything is possible. Um, you know, to think that, um, you know, why couldn't there be a fish in the cup? It's kind of like pigs might fly. Like, why couldn't pigs fly? You know, if you, under the right circumstances, maybe they could. Um, so, yeah, it's this kind of like believing in the impossible or having dreams that are kind of a bit fantastical, which is beautiful energy. It's actually manifestation energy. It, it kind of like allows you to visualize yourself in different situ situations and scenarios. Um, which then gives you the ability to say, okay, that is what I want from my life, so I'm going to take steps towards it. People who can't visualise um, don't really have the ability to to know what they want from life or what steps to take. So it's kind of like your superpower. Now, the moon card here after the Page of Cups represents to me fears, um, nightmares, um, secrets, um, things that are hidden. Um, kind of like the dark side of life is the way it's coming through for me today. So I feel like something happened on your journey, Pisces, where you lost that fish in the cup. So metaphorically, you lost your ability to dream or you lost your faith in your dreams. And kind of your dream, all your dreams kind of turned into nightmares. It's like, well, I thought I knew what I wanted, but this isn't what I wanted. This, you know, this situation didn't turn out how I wanted it to. So something like this, it's like your dreams got crushed somewhere along the way. Uh, so this is over a long period of time, I feel. So then this moves into the Knight of Cups and you can see that he's going forwards, but he's lost his fish. The fish is not in the cup anymore and it looks like that cup is empty. So 
again, it's like going forward, but being more practical, still having that cup, still having the ability to love, to feel, to dream, but feeling a little bit disillusioned, disappointed. Then what happens is you go into this King of Cups energy. That was my floorboard creaking, if you heard that. Um, and again, he's he's got the empty cup. So the empty cup is talking to me about dissatisfaction uh, today. Uh, wanting some kind of emotional connection or um, something that fills you emotionally is the way it's coming through. It may not even be a person. It may be like um, wanting to do a job that feels fulfilling or just wanting to like live your life in a way where you feel like your heart is full um, and you have a lot of love for your life and the situation and the things that you do in general. But you can see he does have a fish, but the fish is actually now a gold necklace. So what this is telling me is that somewhere along the way, your dreams, this kind of beautiful like spiritual energy that you had somehow turned into something that was more practical and more tangible um material things so it may be the it's almost as though your dreams kind of it's like your day-to-day -day life practical matters um overcame your dreams so instead of being like I'm doing this because I want to do it it's became I'm doing this because I have to do it I have to pay the bills I have to get this money I have to do all these practical things or you kind of set out doing something that was very much like um something you felt very enthusiastic for and you had a lot of energy for but it became very grounded and practical and kind of mundane um and almost a bit like an albatross around his neck it's, it feels more like the fish has become some sort of burden so <sighs> I'm just going to flip these cards over and sort of show you what I'm connecting here. So the nine of cups is the, the kind of energy of like having dreams and wishes and um, wish fulfillment. It's like you had an idea of what your wish fulfillment was, what your fantasy was, um, what would make you happy. Then the knight of cups comes along because it's got this eight of cups energy with it, which is like, well, the eight of cups isn't the nine of cups. So this this feeling of like, well, I'm here now, but there's a cup missing. Uh, this isn't everything that I wanted that I feel like something's missing and my cup's empty right so then the king of cups here has this six of cups so here comes the nostalgia so you sat there kind of having achieved something uh, but that fish has become like an albatross around your neck it's become a burden so you've got a lot of nostalgia for childhood or you're thinking back about childhood or there's this general sense of kind of looking back at the past past events, friendships, um, things that happened, good or bad, and kind of assessing them is the energy. Uh, so it's really kind of figuring out what you want here. Now, Poseidon um, is the god that's associated with your sign. He's the god of the sea in Greek mythology. Um, you've also got Neptune, who is the Roman equivalent of Poseidon, is your ruling planet. So you've got all this kind of watery energy and the moon as well. It's kind of Cancerian, but I always associate the moon with your sign. Uh, the moon is your tarot card um, in the tarot. So you've got this kind of like very watery energy. It's very much like you can see on the Poseidon card, it says flow. Now, if I draw your attention to, uh, let me just remove these cards because I kind of I've discussed those and I don't want to overcomplicate the spread. So I'm going to put those to one side. But you can see here all these characters. Now, considering you're a water sign and water is your strength, none of these characters are in the water. Like, you know, that guy, he's on his horse. He's not, none of them are actually in the water. But if you look at Poseidon here, who's your deity, he's your kind of divine spirit guide or however you want to put it. And again, don't worry too much about religion. It's kind of the story is more important here. So Poseidon, who is um, kind of like this energy that's um, surrounding you or, you know, influencing you. He's actually knee deep in the water there. He is he he's embracing the water he lives in the water now it's really interesting i had um, a, a capricorn reading the other day where it, sort of i was in that half asleep state where i start to get a lot of kind of like visions and messages coming through um and i got this whole story played out in my head with tarot cards and, and images where it's like all the different 
signs were had like kingdoms uh, so uh, Scorpio's kingdom was like a volcanic island um, Libra's kingdom was like a crystal and ice fortress a bit like Elsa um, who else was there Cancer had this very like um, fortified like spiky tower going on and your energy Pisces your kingdom it was like um, Atlantis it was like you were out of the water but then this flood came in and you were scared of the flood it's funny you've got the storm card in the underline of this card it's like this flood came in and um, you know, where everybody else, like the crops would be ruined or they wouldn't be able to swim, They, you know, the kingdom would, it would be a disaster. For Pisces, it was almost like you all grew fishtails and became mermaids and you were like, oh, this is even better than it was before. Because the emotions are your strength, it's your natural environment. So I'm talking metaphorically, okay, but it's it's the same thing. It's like, for some reason, you're not in your emotions. You're not connected to your emotions. It's almost like you're removed, like emotionally removed from something. So the energy is telling you, connect with your emotions. Your emotions are your strength. They're your superpower. Let me just check what I've got here. So I've got some stuff about the water cycle, about uh, how uh, flexible, again, your Poseidon says flow. So there's something about how flexible water is, how, you know, you can pour it into different containers and it will take the shape of different containers. So there's something to do with your emotions fitting your circumstances. So there could be something where you need to move into a different circumstance that allows you to connect to emotions that you would normally keep tempered. But you have to let your emotions flow. And you also... With the moon and the sea, the moon cycle affects the sea. So there's something, you may find that the moon cycle affects you. Um, if you're female, you may find it affects your uh, menstrual cycle, for example. So you may find you more emotional at certain times than others. You may, obviously this is something all women experience, but you may find it, you experience it strongly. So you may want to keep a moon diary of how you're feeling, whether you're female or male or um, other. Um, you may want to keep um, a diary of the moon cycle and how it affects your mood. Now, there is a full moon tonight when this reading goes up on the 27th of February. It already looks beautiful. I was up this morning at daft o'clock with my phone at the window trying to take a picture of the moon. It didn't work. But um, already the moon, moon looks really big and beautiful. So maybe you want to go outside uh, either tonight or next time there's a full moon um, and just keep an eye on the moon and keep an eye on like the moon cycle it's interesting like on this card it just caught my eye they're moving towards the well kind of in the general direction of the moon right so some really just feel like the moon is important for some reason it may just help you like going outside and looking at the moon or looking at the moon through a window or this telescope it may help you connect emotionally to something it may make you just feel very poetic <laughs> right i don't know but just give it a try there may be something there also this feeling of like the rain. Um, so I think you had this in your last reading. It's like those moonbeams are coming down and they're trying to catch them in the mouth. Like the wolves are howling at the moon. But I'm getting something to do with rain and singing. Now this actually gave me singing in the rain. I'm singing in the rain, just singing in the rain. And again, you've got this storm card here on the underlying. So it's almost like when the storms come in, when things get emotional, when... Um, when things go wrong or things are challenging, Pisces, you're being encouraged to sing in the rain because the rain actually gives you strength. So uh, when you feel strong emotions, embrace that because that gives you strength. Um, it's like your superpower. So this then gave me Percy Jackson. <laughs> uh, yeah, you may want to literally sing in the rain or you may want to, I keep getting recommended on YouTube, uh, like um, things to help you sleep and it's like rain sounds. It's like uh, rain on the window and there's oldies playing in the next room so if you're having trouble sleeping like me maybe that would be helpful for both of us but yeah uh, this all gave me Percy Jackson Jackson because I don't know if you're familiar with the story of Percy Jackson it's um, a series of children's books they made a few films um, he actually he's very um very, he, he kind of he's a demigod so he has kind of superpowers associated with water so he could be in a fight and he could be losing the fight but if you'll fall into a river and then all of a sudden it's like he gets this power up this boost of strength so definitely like even taking long hot baths or you know 
making sure you have regular showers or uh, drinking lots of water. Really kind of see water as almost like an elixir for you. Treat water like an elixir and just see how that goes for you. But um, yeah, so Percy Jackson is here. Um, it's my daughter's school book. Um, it's, no, sorry, it's my son's school book. And I opened it to a couple of random pages. So, uh, page 187. So this is of, of <laughs> quite typically, of and the sea of monsters. Maybe you've experienced a sea of monsters. Let me just flip to page 187 because there was something on that card, on that card, on that page. So, um, um, his, um, Percy's, um, they've been on a boat and his friend has fallen into the water and he says, I knew I couldn't let, I knew I couldn't let her get out of the water. The sea was my only advantage. It had always protected me one way or another. So are your emotions protecting you one way or another? Then I flipped the page and I opened it like dead on, like Again, random page, shut my eyes, opened a random page and I got an oracle message. So the oracle message says, you shall sail the iron ship with warriors of bone. You shall find what you seek and make it your own. But despair for your life entombed within stone and fail without friends to fly home alone, right? Sounds like a bad oracle message. Um, and this is what, so this is a girl who um, Percy doesn't get on with very well. This is a girl called Clarice. But Clarice is, um, she's very aggressive, but she's a daughter of Ares. Um, so they're kind of like, um, they're kind of friends, but they don't get on. You know, one of those kind of relationships. They work together, but they don't always get on. So the line here is, um, my fists clenched. It was my least favorite Olympian, Ares, the god of war. I don't want excuses, little girl, he growled. Y yes, father, Clarice mumbled. You don't want to see me mad, do you? No, father. No, father, Ares mimicked. You're pathetic. I should have let one of my sons take this quest. I'll succeed, Clarice promised, her voice trembling. I'll make you proud. You'd better, he warned. You asked me for this quest, um, girl, if you let that slimeball Jackson kid steal it from you. But the oracle said... I don't care what it said, Ares bellowed with such force that his image shimmered. You will succeed, and if you don't, he raised his fist. Even though he was only a figure in the steam, Clarice flinched. So Clarice has had this oracle and her father's been pretty horrible about the whole situation. But again, like, so this is like the difference of the pages here, right? So um, when it gets to further on in the book um, and... Um, they're kind of in a bit of a dire situation. They ask Clarice what the oracle said. Percy understands it. And he says, um, it's your quest. Um, hang on, where is it? That's what the prophecy meant. You'd fail without friends, meaning you need our help, but you'd have to fly home alone to get the fleece back safely. So it's... it's... <sighs> The oracle's telling her, it kind of like, it plays out, um, but ultimately her friends help her, but she has something to do that only she can do. So this is kind of what I feel is coming through for you. Um, this emotional strength, um, this um, probably dealing with a masculine energy that isn't very nice and is quite abusive, possibly. And also this feeling of, um, now I did genuinely flip the book open and there the two pages it landed on. It's funny that they were both discussing the oracle. So I, I genuinely, everything that's coming through here is not of my making. It's the messages I'm getting through and it's what I'm, is being put in front of me. I'm not setting anything up here just so you all kind of know. Uh, but there could be something to do with like trying to interpret an oracle. I know that I've had a couple of things where it's like, that doesn't make sense. And a couple of them, you know, it could be months later and all of a sudden it'll make sense. And I'm like, I know what that means now, you know, from either my own messages or other people's messages, or, um, there's a couple of things that I'm still kind of hanging on to that I'm waiting to see play out that I know means something because I keep getting the repeated message, but I'm like, well, where is it? <laughs> but, um, you could have something similar where it's like, well, <sighs> I think somebody else got a, the Ocean Colour Scene song, um, a, a riverboat song, and it's like, everything you said came to pass, everything you said is right, so what does this mean? It may just be that it's for somebody else, right? But if it feels like it's something, like, because this is the feeling, it's like, it feels like it's something, it's something that, like, that's stuck with me. So it's like waiting for that to play out. So trying to interpret an oracle, 
having some kind of quest to do, having friends helping you, but there's something you have to do alone. Now, remember the empty cup. So it had a fish in a cup. Maybe the fish wasn't what you wanted. Maybe, the, you know, what you thought your dreams and ambitions was turned out to be that kind of burden around your neck, but your cup's still empty. It's like, I want to feel emotional fulfillment. So to feel emotional fulfillment, you have to do that deep dive into your emotions. This then brings you to the Ace of Cups. So look at this cup. It's overflowing, absolutely overflowing. And it has a dove, dove there symbolizing peace. So this is what you are aiming for. This is what you want. So you have to face the storms, the stormy emotions in order to unlock something. It's like, they show me a cork, sorry. <laughs> Literally, I can hear it. It's like, like, that pop sound, I can't do it. So they show me um, a, a cork popping out. Uh, you need to un uncork some sort of emotional blockage within you. As if that wasn't enough, when I was shuffling this deck up here, um, some more cards flew out <laughs> and you won't believe which cards they were. Uh, again, these three cards came out together and I was like, I can't believe that, like that is amazing. And wait until you hear your songs as well. No, in fact, I'm gonna tell you what your first song was first. And we'll have a quick read of the lyrics. Okay, remember singing in the rain and this kind of soul quest you're on? The song you got as your first song, randomised on Spotify, was Hallelujah by Tori Kelly. Now, it's the traditional song, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, the one that everybody knows, right? But there's different lyrics. This It starts off the same, but it changes. I prefer this version. I really, really like this version because I've never really understood that song. The, the original lyrics of that song, I've never really understood it. I thought it was a religious song. And I remember saying this once on Twitter and my friend Annabelle was like, that's not a religious song <laughs> and I was like isn't it it says hallelujah and then she was like no it's kind of the opposite so I don't know I don't know what that song means to you but I'll read these lyrics um and this is kind of that thing about yeah I'll just read it for you um now I've heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord but you don't really care for music do you it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall and the major lift, the baffled king composing hallelujah. Your faith was strong, but you needed proof. You saw her bathing on the roof. Her beauty and the moonlight over overthrew you. She tied you to the kitchen chair. She broke your throne and she cut your head. No, mm, I don't know. Is this the lyrics of the Katori Kelly version? It says it is. She broke your throne and she cut your hair and from your lips you drew a hallelujah. I did my best. It wasn't much. I couldn't feel, so I tried to touch. I've told the truth. I didn't come to fool you. This is how I feel every time I do a reading. I've told the truth. I didn't come to fool you. And even though it all went wrong, I'll stand before the Lord of Song with nothing on my tongue but hallelujah. So it's that feeling, I'm going to cry again. It always makes me cry, this song. So it's that feeling of like, I did my best. I came with good intentions. I didn't try and fool anyone. Um, and I know that when I stand on there on Judgment Day, that... I can stand there with a pure soul, a soul that's as light as a feather because I know that I've done my best and I've been a good person, is the way that I interpret it. Now it's from a, um, a movie uh, called Sing, um, and again, you've got that thing about singing. So, and and I don't know if you're a musician or there's something about song. Um, so yeah, uh, hmm, hmm. Um, so <laughs> bearing in mind that your song was Hallelujah, the songs, the, the cards that came out were No Word of a Lie, these three fell out together. Daughter Spirit, The Fourth Chakra, Archangel Raphael, and The Temple Path. I'm going to read them in numerical order for you. Okay, they're not all like this. There's, there's words like deceit and horrible cards in this deck, but you've got these very, very spiritual cards, like three of the most spiritual cards in the whole deck, right? Um, the Temple Path spiritual purpose and support receiving this card represents your own spiritual evolution the winding path you are on leads to a blessed temple in a lovely garden symbolizing the spiritual destiny your soul has in mind for this lifetime this card upright is here to tell you that what you're going through now is all part of your soul's process you are on your karmic path and heading in the right direction and the choices you make now are important for your personal growth growth and life lessons the lights around the temple represent the spirit world, your family members and friends, angels and guides, all the loving spirit helpers who long to assist you. 
Call upon them and be open to their wisdom and inspiration. This is a wonderful life-expanding time, so keep in mind your personal priorities as well as your spiritual connection. Following your higher intentions will help you to move your life forwards in dramatic ways, and connecting with spirit and your higher self will have a wonderful influence on all that you experience. Okay. Okay, just if you notice those little pauses, it's just while I find the page, so I'm not taking up too much of your time. Um, Daughter Spirit, Spiritual Awakenings and New Beginnings. This door opens onto the expansive energetic realm where all new beginnings originate. The orbs of light are guiding you through the clouds of the earthly world, leading you to a deeper understanding of your eternal identity, identity the source of all true value and power. This door opens onto a truly unlimited potential for the changes that happen here reach deep into the core of your being as such this card often heralds your increasing powers in the spiritual arts and a deepening connection with the spirit world don't be surprised if you find yourself becoming more intuitive more aware of spirit's presence or more powerful in your own healing practices now is the time to open up to the unexpected guidance and inspiration of spirit and to the magic and power of your true identity and there's that dove again right that was on the ace of cups card uh playing the uh, hallelujah song again in my head um again i've got no i've got no agenda here i'm not trying to like push you into one religion or another like i don't identify with any particular religion myself there's no agenda this is i'm just reading the cards i'm just reading the messages and the songs that are coming through right um fourth chakra archangel Raphael, love compassion and self-acceptance they're showing me the turtle um Raphael the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle for some reason um I, I'm getting he was always the grumpy one so I don't know if there's something about being a bit grumpy uh Raphael extends a beautiful green energy surrounded by gentle waves of pink to your heart center this card upright indicates that you now have a greater readiness to receive love from others as well as from yourself it could also indicate that a much needed healing from a previous broken heart is taking place the tender vibrations of Raphael um, remind you to encourage yourself with the compassionate self-talk that you so desire to hear from others. Know that as you do, the light from your heart centre will shine with an irresistible beauty and the universe will send people and situations that cause your sense of love and support to grow and grow. Gorgeous. So this is like healing the heart, some kind of spiritual journey of the heart. Um, and yeah, you're really seeking that that full cup of love, right? Um, full cup of love for yourself. You, I feel like you already have a cup that overflows with love for others. That's a very Piscean energy. But you need it's something about self acceptance and healing and p like peace with your decisions of the past. Something like this. So beautiful, absolutely beautiful spiritual reading, Pisces. You always have very very spiritual readings. I feel. Um, a lot of stuff about healing the past as well seems to come through, which leads me to your next song because you got This Used To Be My Playground by Madonna. This used to be my playground. This used to be my childhood dream. This used to be the place we ran to whenever I was in need of a friend. Why did it have to end? So I don't know what this is for you. It's really giving me that Six of Cups energy. Possibly someone walked away from you. It hurts. You don't understand why. Um, the film, it's from a film called, um, what's it called? A League of Their Own, uh, which had Madonna in, and Tom Hanks and Gina Davis. Uh, again, this thing about baseball, it, I think it keeps coming up for Capricorn. Um, but this film, it's like... Um, I think it centres around the relationship between Gina Davis and Tom Hanks, uh, their characters, um, and they're kind of in this baseball team together, and they have a very turbul turbulent relationship. He is quite grumpy in that film, um, and I think they, they kind of have a bit of a love for each other, um, but I feel like they go their separate ways. Um, so there could be something in that for somebody um they kind of meet up again at the end i don't want to spoil it too much definitely go and watch that movie it's a very sweet movie uh, the only other thing i have for you is that i'm seeing uh, synchronistic numbers so when i first turned my phone on it was my battery was 32 percent and it was 11 32 so i had 32 32 threes and twos uh, break down to five so five five talks about big changes uh yeah some kind of big change but then 
the time ticked over and then it was 11.33. So again, synchronistic numbers. Um, I kind of prepared the reading, made my notes, uh, turned the Samsung on to get Spotify up and it was 11.44. So uh, every time I've looked at the clock, I've seen a synchronistic number. Um, but yeah, let's clear these cards away. I'm going to reshuffle these into the deck um, and then we'll get your song on camera and start to pull you some cards. To save time, I'm just going to do this as I'm as I'm shuffling. So um, as I'm kind of putting these cards away, they're giving me um, financial constraints and a woman holding a coin. There may be like a job, something about getting a job here, so somebody offering help, mon monetary support to somebody in a financial constraint. Um, they were giving me... Um, some lines from that, this used to be my playground song, um, they were giving me, um, there's hope yet, there's hope yet, and I wish that you were here with me. So uh, if there is somebody that you have, um, who you have feelings for, who's at a distance, doesn't have to be a romantic relationship, although it could be, um, you have got the flame there underneath the storm. Um, so yeah, could be, um, it could be that they're saying there's hope yet for this relationship. Maybe don't give up on it too soon. Maybe, um, yeah, really explore your feelings perhaps about a connection if it's there's hope yet and I wish that you were here with me is the lines that were stuck in my head. Uh, I don't know if you can see this, but it's uh, I'm talking about synchro synchronistic numbers. It's 29.29 now, 29%, 12 29. So every time, every single time I've looked at the clock, there's been a synchronistic number. Uh, 29, 2 and 9 breaks down to 11. 11, 11 is what you've got now. Um, so uh, that, yeah, 11s talk about pairs, union, uh, two people coming together. They corrected me. I don't know if you corrected my grammar then because they were correcting me and kind of like laughing at me because <laughs> I said... Um, the, the, line, the lines is or something and they were like the lines are the lines are so I don't know if you created my gra grammar because I, I got it um, okay Pisces, 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 Pisces Pisces, fish babies um, what is going to be the song for your reading on camera oh, a bit Rudy <laughs> oh my goodness, Pisces did not expect that from you the bad touch by the bloodhound gang okay <laughs> Wow, the energy definitely changed there. I'll listen to it a little bit off camera. I'm definitely going like, to have a little dance to it when the reading's done. Uh, yeah, you and me, baby, ain't nothing but mammals. So let's do it like they do on the Discovery Channel. Pisces. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, okay, so I don't know what we're going to get from the card reading, but that was a huge energy shift from what I was picking up on the uh, intuitive reading. Oh, look at what's on the bottom. Yeah, maybe you are going to be doing it like... <laughs> doing it like mammals maybe you will need a mop, mop and bucket <laughs> to clean up that kind of love Ugh, Pisces okay right <laughs> Pisces Spices what have you got today <laughs> okay strategy strategizing for something community everybody's getting that card at the moment community 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 I'm blaming uh Pisces and uh, not Pisces sorry Aquarius energy for for that Strategy, hostility, hostilities, attachment. Oh, okay. I'm going to read from the books and we'll find out more. Strategy, hostilities and attachment. I don't like attachment. I always feel like it's something someone's chained to and they're wearing a false mask. Hostilities uh, can be good or bad. It's almost like, sometimes it's like King of Swords energy. Uh, strategizing because you're preparing for battle. You're preparing to uh, face something and conquer it or confront something. Uh, it could be that you are faced with hostility. So you're trying to strategize uh, how to deal with the situation. Possibly how to get out of maybe some kind of contract um, or situation that you feel chained to that isn't serving you anymore. It, it can be codependencies as well, like um, uh, addictions, alcohol addictions, things like this, uh, attachments to certain people, places or things. Um, so I just, full full disclosure, I went to the bathroom while I listened to that Blood Town Gag song and uh, it's, um, I did wash my hands after going to the bathroom and my rings, no, okay, everything's lewd. Why is everything lewd all of a sudden with you, Pisces? I'm just gonna shut up. Um, <laughs> um, for God's sake. <laughs> I'm too lazy to edit that out. I'm noticing as well this white feather. And I was talking about this, like, wanting to have a soul as light as a feather. You know what? Do you know? If you're in a relationship with somebody and it's mutual and 
you know, things are all good, then why shouldn't you do it like they do on the Discovery Channel? You go ahead, Pisces, and have a great time. Don't feel guilty about having, you know, sexual wants, sexual needs. If you and your partner are both up to it, you know, get get down and dirty. Um, Pisces, please. Pisces, Pisces, Pisces. Pisces, Pisces, Pisces. Um, what's on the bottom? Conclusions are within reach. A uh, full moon eclipse. They're still giving me the like sweat baby sweat baby um your dreams need a practical plan full moon in taurus yeah pisces <laughs> but i feel like that was the problem i feel like that's what you would you did you were like right my dreams need a practical plan but then you got all bogged down in the details right you got bogged down with the day-to-day -day, and then you got chained to something you couldn't escape from it's like well i thought this was my dream this used to be my playground and now it's like everything's gone a bit wrong i've ended up being stuck in a contract stuck in a karmic tie Pisces, that's on the underlying water creation. I told you, look at how deep she is in that water, and look at all the doves that are around her. This is so so similar to what I was picking up on the beginning with all the doves in the water. You have to get into your emotions here. Your emotions are kind of like your creative potential. I don't know if somebody's on the cusp of Aquarius. Or if somebody has strong Aquarius in the chart. But Aquarius had a very, very similar message. So I don't know if you want to go and um, hit that timestamp in the Aquarius reading as well. Um, when I start to pull cards. But they got two cards that talks about taking a really deep dive into their emotions. So yeah, if you're Pisces cusp um, or there's strong Pisces in your chart, or, you know, definitely go and check out that reading too. That's not me self-promoting. It's like practically the same message um wildness electricity so fire and water i'm getting sagittarian energy like alchemy like wildness there you go do it like they do on the with, uh, on the discovery channel right so connecting to very powerful emotions here it feels like oh what, what are they trying to give me it feels like yeah like creation energy or like 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 first and second chakra energy that's that's kind of like this powerful like not doing things from a logical place but doing things from like passion and feelings and it feel it feels kind of like animalistic but in like a, a creative passionate way um that, that feels quite wild and untempered they're giving me the word untempered so i don't know if that specific word has some specific meaning to some of you um maybe because i was saying temper your emotions before and then it's like now it's like time to untemper them also the sword swords get tempered so Maybe someone has a temper. Maybe you're trying to control your temper. So it may be like you're trying to figure out, well, how do I connect? I'm seeing the Ace of Wands on the underlying. It's of the, that deck there as well. So it's like, how do I connect to this emotional, fiery energy, this passionate, emotional, creative energy that's so powerful? It's like it scares you. And it's like you then try to analyze it in some kind of way or... Like, you try and hold back because you don't want to go in and scare other people or you don't want to go in too strong. Um, maybe you feel very emotional, fired up about something. Maybe, you know, maybe something's not fair and it's like, I, need, I know I need to go and address this. I need to communicate. I need to speak and speak my truth about this situation or, you know, logically negotiate my way out of something. Um, and it's making me feel angry. It's making me feel over-emotional. Um, how do I temper this so I can do it in a logical way? So there's kind of two storylines coming through there. I'm going to bring these cards down and these are the cards that we're going to kind of ask more about. I love that water card there. She reminds me of, uh, you know, Moana, uh, the Disney film Moana. Oh, is that for me? It was for next door. Yeah, the, the old lady, the grandma in Moana. I love her. What's this? Mountain Clarity. I've never seen that car before. And there's that hearth and home underneath that keeps coming out. Um, so let's read strategy and then pull some cards on it. Okay, so strategy, making a plan. You may be getting, a, yeah, I really feel like making a plan to escape an, a situation that where there's been hostilities, you know, a situation that feels hostile in some way. And uh, there's maybe conflict there. Right, okay. I don't know which way around to put these. I'm going to put them the way that they originally came out because uh, I feel like it could be you, actually. Um, not that you're being hostile, but 
It's like you need to take action. Uh, strategy. This card shows a pen, journal, compass and key. When you receive this card upright, it indicates that this is the optimum time for setting up a very specific strategy for achieving your goals. Write about the direction you want to go in. Consider any potential change in course that may be needed. Be aware of the particulars regarding your goals and have some conscious plan in mind. Structure the short-term goals needed to make your long-term goals a reality. This card is telling you to spend some time setting things in order. It's time to take full control. Add thought to action and set your sights on the road ahead. Okay, so you are getting a huge amount of yang energy here um, with, with this ele electricity card, with this king of swords. This is like taking control of your own life, taking action um, because you're moving based on your passions. So yeah, but tempering those emotions, but still accessing that, you know, popping that cork and not bottling them up. Maybe you're going to have success. Maybe that's why they were showing me the... the the cork and the bottle um maybe it's like popping a cork because you're celebrating something um celebrating getting out of something so making a plan we have strategy making a plan so 26 hostilities defenses up aggressive energy it's funny that we had that aries thing as well in that percy jackson book so i don't know for some of you this is you for some of this is some of you this is somebody that you're dealing with this card shows a man raising his sword in readiness to do battle. When it comes upright, it reveals a situation where hostilities towards you are about to be or have already been engaged. I don't like this. P Pisces, no. <laughs> Pisces, not my Pisces. <laughs> Stay back, stay away from my Pisces. Um, the aggressive energy may be verbal or emotional. Like immediately I'm like wanting to wrap you up in bubble wrap and like run away with you. <laughs> uh, the aggressive energy may be verbal or emotional. With someone in your environment being excessively critical, demanding or hurtful. In work or social situation, there may be backstabbing or out and out slander going on. This is different from the deceit card because the hostile energies are more apparent, more overt. In fact, you may have been living with them for some time. Uh, I hope not, Pisces. But whether this is new or old energy, now is the time to regain control. Allow dishonouring treatment from other. Allowing di dishonouring treatment from others is an open invitation to the universe to send you more. It may feel risky, but you don't. But you need to have the courage to stand up for yourself now and always. Yeah. Pisces you are a very flexible sign and you do have rose tinted glasses again it depends on the um you know your full chart some Pisces are going to be more um I'm, I'm they're giving me the word pushover Pisces I'm sorry but some of you are going to be more of a pushover than others um depending on your full chart your full birth chart which you can check out in the description box down below there's a link there um but Pisces energy on its own you know, especially in love situations or family, people who you care about, you will put on those rose tinted glasses and you'll ignore bad stuff and you'll put up with bad stuff for a long, long time, which means that you actually enable that in other people. And I'm not victim blaming here. I'm not victim blaming. I'm encouraging you to stand up for what you know is right and fair um, and not allow other people to take advantage of your very, very kind, sweet, um, gentle, giving nature. Uh, you just, you know, you are a beautiful sign. You really are one of, I don't, don't tell the others, but you're one of my favourite signs. And, um, you know, sadly, people do take advantage of you, your very sweet nature. And that's, that's not your fault. You know, they should know better. But you are being encouraged to stand up for yourself and stand firm, hold your ground and, and not put up with people who are going to treat you badly. You know, not my Pisces, no. <laughs> um attachment perceived need and the choice to let go Ugh. in the upright position this card reveals that your passage forwards is being stopped by strong attachments to old patterns or people from the past the chain at your wrist is bolted to fear from the past or desperation about the future although you, i can feel it oh no i can feel it it's like right here on my wrist it's like you can almost like see it like it's like a jabbing in my wrist oh it feels horrible um, I'm making me squeamish. Um, although you may wear the mask of pre pretense or even contentment, you simply cannot seem to go forward. The stuff that's keeping you stuck could be physical addictions, emotional patterns, or even old relationships. Emotional patterns with that moon and flow, that could be one of them. Again, um, moon energy, water energy does sometimes indicate an attachment to alcohol. So that's for somebody as well. 
doesn't have to be you it could be somebody around you possibly but it, you know i am reading for you um are you living in fear moon card addicted to old unhealthy habits or so desperate about the future that you can't be happy now if so the chains that bind you could be of your own making this card is telling you that it's time to take the action you need to break out of your chains and move forward to an open free healthy and authentic authentically happy life i'm sorry it's making me really squeamish they're still doing it on both my wrists um, it may take some courage and effort to let go but know that you are capable of doing it until you do the difficult energy will just repeat itself keeping you stuck oh, i want to put that card down um gross shake it off shake it off uh right okay uh let's keep going then so Tell me more about strategy. Yeah, let's get let's get your plan to get out of there, whatever that situation is, Pisces. Tell me about strategy, please. There you are. Uh, Knight of Pentacles coming up with a plan. Literally, that card means coming up with a plan or uh, moving forward with a plan. Uh, kind of the Page of Pentacles is forming a plan, doing the research. Knight of Pentacles is putting a plan into action, taking slow and steady steps forward. So you are taking steps out of a situation. And notice this is the only card in all my tarot decks where the um, knight carries a scythe. So you're getting ready to cut something out. You're getting ready to end, an, end a situation to free yourself from whatever these shackles are. Pisces, love you. Brilliant amazing like love you so much <laughs> uh, so yeah i really feel like you've got that sword because you're about to break your own chains in a situation so hostilities then it doesn't mean literal chains as well it can be emotional connections um and, and emotional connections to the past um you know uh contracts that you're stuck in or um all sorts of things just something that you're tied to you know addictions uh you're ready to cut something out you're taking those practical tangible steps forward to get out of whatever that situation is that way you're feeling stuck so tell me about the hostilities please i've got one card it's a little bit secretive it's super secretive because wait until you see the full card you can see a face right but can't see a body so do you know what they're giving me? It's like it's like I looked at these two cards and they gave me like a little action scene. It's like I'm seeing this person in the woods like looking for this like little princess. Is like searching around for her, but she's invisible. She, it's like she's got that cloak on from Harry Potter. See the similarities of the hair? Somebody ha may have very, very light hair as well. Um, yeah, definitely the same energy. So yeah, this person's like looking around. It's like, where does she go? Because I think there's a secretive energy of you trying to almost like secretly take these steps out of this situation so it may be like you're doing research you know try if you're leaving a relationship or um whatever it is you're leaving it could be that you're looking things up online coming up with a plan but you're keeping it quite quiet the card did hide and she is quite hidden so um the page of ones actually talks about uh, again it's this student energy gathering information and you've got this kind of wildness electricity up here so there is something where there's a lot of creativity and passion and enthusiasm for something it could be what you're moving towards um but you're being very very secretive about it you're keeping things quite hidden but you are studying you are learning it's like you are it's almost like you're hiding yourself but you're watching the situation play out you're gathering information on it uh, feeling very very passionate about something or someone um so tell me about attachment then please tell me about attachment tell me about attachment please for pisces okay two cards there's that ace of cups so just to show you which card that was if i can find it i think i've tucked it away with your cards now there you go this is what you this is what you want right just kind of look at the difference as well um it's like this is this energy right being in being in a dark place being afraid wearing a mask keeping secrets um very similar energy there and then this is what you want to move towards you want to move to a situation where you can be yourself and there's like this overflowing abundance um like n not being this one not being ashamed of who you are um there's some of you excuse me there um and it's here with this four of wands so it kind of came out sideways let me just see which way around it wants to go yeah it is in the reverse so there is some kind of situation where the four of wands is like uh, if you imagine pitching a tent right you normally have four poles and you drive them really deep down into the earth but if you don't put them deep enough and the storm comes in that tent is going to climb like like fly off those poles are going to be ripped out of the earth and the whole tent's going to fly away um if you 
dig them down really, really deep and really secure them into the ground, that tent's going to weather the storm. So if you think of the tent as being like a place that makes you feel secure, a place that makes you feel safe and grounded, it's kind of like the place that you return to, you go back to, um, you know, the place that you kind of call home. So, um, the four of ones in reverse is that tent that's not got secure foundations it's being blown around in the wind uh there's something that should be should be satisfying to you it should make you feel safe but you don't feel secure there um and you are wanting this kind of like ace of cups so you're wanting this this um this abundance of love this abundance of emotion um and the aces are new the aces normally symbolize um somebody coming into your life um kind of divinely led to be in your life now it doesn't necessarily mean it's a love interest it could be a friend um they just gave me the word online so maybe a friend that you met online um or somebody that you connect with online again you had that thing about somebody being at a distance from somebody uh, but it's somebody where it's somebody new or it's a connection where there's a re like a, re a refresh of that connection right there's newness to the connection so um yeah but this is normally some somebody coming towards you or you going towards someone else with a huge cup of love and affection for somebody um but then you've got this four of wands which says that you're not secure you're attached to something that doesn't feel secure angel down on we there now this is a beautiful angel she's the angel of the night she's specific to this specific deck uh, but she guides you through the darkness she guides you through the difficult times so um when you feel cold and alone or um hopeless or directionless um the angel den on we is there to kind of wrap her arms around you in that darkness and kind of get you through help you get through dark times help you get through the storm so beautiful that she's there for you i'm actually going to leave that face up so uh let's get you it's interesting because they were showing me mermaids so i got my two decks that have a lot of mermaids in and you haven't got any mermaids out here it's funny because um, i was expecting it with all our atlantis stuff and, and you know these these kinds of things that you're getting as well um so i keep picking both cards up so it, i i feel like they're trying to show me the home card just to kind of show it you uh this is what you want right this is this is the temp pegs really secure and firm uh but there's a lot of fire there as well it's like it's almost like your home situation like you know it, it could it's like reading this card very differently today than what i'd normally read it it's like some kind of home situation where it's like any one of those um, embers those uncontrolled emotions uh uncontrolled passions the, any one of them could easily set those curtains alight right so there is this feeling of instability in the situation somehow and then right underneath that yeah look confirmation there fury bushfires um, so I feel like there could be somebody in interesting uh, consecutive as well. And I, I always um, go through the decks to make sure that they're not consecutive. Uh, cave there as well, like, which again gives me like the home life protection. Um, so it's like some kind of like protecting your home from an energy that's volatile or um, something to do with like a, a place that should feel like home. But there's um, an energy in there that's very volatile, it's very fiery, uh, untempered, um, hostile. Uh, Pisces, you deserve better than that. You, you know you do. You're a very, very, very good person. Um, I think you're probably the closest closest star sign to being an angel, right? <laughs> Maybe you don't feel like you are, especially with that song. But... Um... You are, you're very, you've, you're the last sign of the zodiac, so you're kind of like the sign that's, you've been through all the other signs, you know, if you believe in like past lives, you've, you've been an Aries, you've been a Taurus, you've been a Gemini, you've kind of gone through them all, you've learned all the lessons, and then Pisces is kind of very well-rounded and whole and emotionally connected and good, right? Um, because you've learned all those lessons, you kind of made the mistakes of all the other signs, so now you kind of understand the impact that you have on others. Uh, so yeah, very compassionate, very loving, very idealistic. Uh, let's go to the Knight of Pentacles and Strategy. Knight of Pentacles and Strategy for Pisces, please. I'll try and do this on camera, actually. Knight of Pentacles and Strategy there for me. Yeah, the Five of Earth in the reverse. Um, I'm going to read from the deck to see what it says in the deck for this one. But the Five of Pentacles in the upright for me is like literally like splitting the assets, cutting your losses, getting out of a situation, or feeling like you're out in the cold, feeling like... Um, you've been left out of a situation or it's like you, you didn't get that promotion you wanted or um dissatisfaction with with tangible things which again is very similar to that king of king of cups that i picked up on with the with the um fish around his neck 
Uh, so let's have a quick look at what this book says about this because I feel like Oh, you don't read reversals. You don't read reversals in this deck. It's a stipulation of the deck, but it has come out in reverse. So I'm going to read what it says and then we'll have a think about what that could mean. Five of verse. Alternative forms of abundance. The lack, the illusion of lack, overlooked treasures. All is not as it seems. So this is a time to look again. A change in perception can bring into focus the results I sought, just in a different form than expected. I am called to move away from poverty consciousness, funny you had that financial lack right on the bottom of the deck before, and open my eyes my eyes to treasures before me that are suddenly illuminated. The illusion of wealth gives way to true abundance. There is no need to fear that the rug will be pulled out from under me. There's that tent, right? What we draw attention to grows, so I count my blessings and I realise I have far more than I thought. I have come far in my quest for building up what I need and even more opportunity for experiencing abundance awaits. So with it being in the reverse, it's kind of the opposite. So it's like you are overlooking a treasure. You are overlooking something. When you're forming your plan, there's something you're overlooking. And this, you, you don't feel secure in your foundations. You know, you could have been trying to build up... Um, trying to build up some kind of wealth, some kind of resources, um, you know, building that home life. Uh, but there's something that's not worked out. It's like, um, yeah, getting that albatross around your neck in a way. It's like you've ended up getting tied to something that doesn't fit you anymore. It doesn't suit you anymore. And there's this sense of either keeping secrets, very secretive energy, or wearing a false mask in a situation. It could be that you're trying to hide your true self, something that you're truly passionate about. Uh, because you know that if you expressed it, then perhaps there would be um, hostilities, there'd be a disagreement. Because it might be like, well, I've been working as a, oh, think of me working as a waitress in a cocktail bar. That's really funny. Um, somebody knows why. Um, but uh, they're giving, like, you, they're showing, they're singing that to me, but they're showing me like a typing clerk, like, a, you know, a, a secretary typist. Um, so it's like, you've been doing this job and it's, it's, there's no soul in it you're just doing the job for, for the money and you're feeling very passionate about something else it's like well do you know what I want to go and be a singer I really want to go and be a singer but I need to you know that's like this wishy-washy career if I go if I follow my dreams of being a singer am I going to have that income maybe I should keep this job that makes me feel grounded and secure even though there's like backstabbing going on in the office um so it's like you want to perhaps go home and say to your partner, look, I don't want to be a typist anymore. I want to go and try and be a singer. I want to write music. But your partner flies off the handle and says, what do you mean? Stop being so selfish. So that's a scenario. It doesn't have to be that specific scenario to you. But it's an example of, of kind of the different pieces of the puzzle that I'm picking up and how it could possibly fit for somebody. So again, it could be something different for someone else. Hostilities, Page of Wands. Tell me about this secretive Page of Wands energy. Well, I think I've just said it, to be honest. <laughs> page of Wands energy for Pisces. Messenger of Water. You could definitely have a secret love interest <laughs> or a friend who's trying to help you out of a situation. The Messenger of Water, it is your... It is your energy, I see it as Piscean energy because it's, to me, it's the Lancelot card. It's the knight in shining armour, the poet on the back of a horse, you know, riding in to kind of express their love and, you know, write sonnets and, you know, <laughs> sing in the rain. Um, my camera's flashing at me one second. I've got four more minutes. So, yeah, you, there's, here's the passion and the water in a positive sense. So, I do feel like there's a situation or a person or a thing that you have a lot of love for, a lot of passion for, and you want to express it, but you are scared of, of the hostilities that could come up when you start to express your feelings. Um, so, um, I mean, I don't know. I think you face your hostilities. I think you, you be your authentic self. You face... You be authentic, you express yourself. And if people don't like it, that's their problem. But, you know, why should you temper that creative passion inside you and stay stuck in a place where you're not happy and you're wearing a false mask just to please somebody else who doesn't seem like a very nice person, quite frankly? Uh, I don't know if you want to look at it that way. That's the way my Libra brain's uh, assessing that situation. Tell me about the Four of Wands and the Ace of Cups, please, with attachment. I've, uh, yeah, same thing, conflicts. Um... It can be conflicted thoughts, conf uh, arguments, conflicted opinions, backstabbing. 
Uh, I may just have a quick look at the book as well on that one. Yeah, so tension, conflict. Conflict is a good way to see my motives and intentions. I can use this experience to grow into a more authentic version of myself. No way. No way. You saw that card come out, right? Literally what I was just saying. Um, it's not important to win. It's important to have integrity. That's what I said. That's about the hallelujah song. Other people have different ways of thinking and may not always be in agreement with me. I am open to this opportunity to live and let live. Oh my goodness, that is exactly what I was saying. I love it when that happens. Right, very quickly, because I'm running out of time here. Let's get you an advice card. Can I get an advice card for Pisces, please? Whoa, that's too many. <laughs> I'm going to read the orphan for you. Uh, that card always hits me right in the feels. Uh, but let's have a look at what else you've got. The father. Yeah, okay. Make that what you will. Um, the village. This talks about leaving a place that feels like home because you need to go on that soul journey you need to go have the adventures and find out what's out there and be authentic and you know sometimes you can return home so this could be returning to some kind of father uh the thread in the reverse uh don't get stuck in that dark cave make sure you uh make sure you hold on to your hopes and dreams to get out of uh, a situation Oh, that's the thread. Yeah, there you go. That's what that's what you're holding on to, a connection with, uh, yeah. <laughs> what I was suspecting here, some of you have definitely got some kind of love connection um, or a connection where there is a lot of love. Sometimes it's a lover. Sometimes it just means um, expressing love, but also kind of like enjoying the moment. So like having that cup of coffee and it being like, you know, the exact thing you needed, exactly the way you like it and really savouring the moment. So uh, yeah, but I'm going to read the orphan card to you as your advice. So the overview is like leaving a home situation in order to follow a thread towards a, a more loving connection. But let's read this orphan card. I hate, this card is my, the card that disturbs me the most. The wounded child, the abandoned, the beggar. To study the orphan is to study the deep and challenging energy of our time. We are ever more connected, yet face collective isolation. I know, right? The refugee crisis haunts our planet. Children are separated from parents and the earth begs for our attention. We are in a time of universal orphanage, of nature, of each other, of our own hearts. Take refuge in the fact that we all share this core wound and dilemma. It is normal to fear this card as it haunts the caverns of the soul. When it appears, take time, real time, to be in the presence of the feelings this card stirs in you. Let it humble you. What are you starving for? What is the deepest gift you could imagine giving to others? What has been rejected is quite possibly what is needed most, dear one. It almost makes me cry. When light, deep solace, deep acceptance and deep love. When, d when dark, distance, hates, avoids, controlling, limiting. Go deeper, Mary Oliver's the kitten. I'm running out of time. Tenderness beyond tenderness is required. Imagine holding yourself in your hands to recognise that each one of us fears rejection and isolation. Attachment issues, somebody. Attachment issues because of parental issues. Um... Is to take one step towards the orphan. More kindness always. More kindness always. Access this archetype through creative acts. I told you, like drawing, painting or writing. Keep it simple. Ask the orphan what it wants to draw, make or say. All right, best of luck with that Pisces. I would definitely go for whatever that is because it looks a whole lot better than what this is. Uh, take care. Best of luck with that. And I'll see you again soon, Pisces. Bye-bye, guys. Okay, just to kind of lighten the mood. <laughs> okay Pisces one more thing and it is good news so um, I tried to put these cards away I kind of shuffled them and everything like that the cards were all separated in the deck put them in the box and it was like no shuffle them again I pulled them out of the box on the underlying the orphan card was back on the underlying so I shuffled them ready to kind of like reshuffle put them back in the box and this card flipped out now look at the difference so there is something where it's, it's like these two cards used to come out for me all together all the time. It's like the difference between them. It's like keeping that fire alive inside, not not being this, but being this. And then it's something to do with the comic, which is like seeing the funny side of life, but also kind of like look at the kind of darkness there behind his eyes. So wearing a mask, pretending to be happy, um, but not being happy inside. Something there with that for somebody. Okay, right, the guys take care. Bye-bye.